My name's uh, Edward Johnson, though apparently my, si my sister and my boss forgot I got married. So. It's Edward, Edward Rhodes for the benefit of the presentation. So, um, to this afternoon I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, our quality practitioner course that we offer. Um, I am the team leader and the... Um, uh, well, not the chief, but the, uh, the, the lead um, trainer for um, compliance. So we were founded in 2017 um, by our CEO, Debbie Whitehead, and we have the proud honour of, be of being the only uh, certification body, um, ISO consultancy and prime training provider in the country. Um, we very proudly formed a partnership with PCS this year. Um, and what we do is we pride ourselves on our one-to-one -one and our support that we provide uh, both our delegates and our firms that we provide consultancy to. So, what does our course provide? Well, we do a lot of um, specialist modules because uh, I had the privilege of writing this course. Um, it's still to the uh, level four apprenticeship standards, but I've very much formulated it around um, the needs of your services. So um, I've looked uh, very much a focus on CQC and compliance. Um, so I've focused on quality strategies, so looking at your policies and procedures. I've looked at person-centered care, so looking at the voice of your patients, how we evidence that. Um, looking at your stakeholder relationships um, with uh, external bodies. Very much looking at governance as well, around what your um, policies and procedures are around CQC and how you manage those. Um, looking at how to get you through a, don't know if anybody's been, how have the privilege of a CQC inspection, but uh, I had the privilege of one on a Sunday afternoon when there was nobody else but me in. So I, I do provide uh, support and guidance through that, through that module. Um, I look at problem solving and I also look at risk management, especially around patient care. So one of the things that everybody likes a freebie. So. It is actually 95 to 100% funded by the government, which is great. Um, and if it's not, it's likely that your levy fund is going to cover the rest of it. So it is, I've done the course myself. And I'm also a practicing learning disability nurse. Um, and do you know what? It might not look like a clinical course, but it actually really is. Because I took some of the um, elements of it. And do you know what? When CQC came into my service, they were like, wow, you've got structure in place, you've got transparency, we can see everything that you're doing. So it was, you know, it was, it was a really nice moment to see the coursework that I'd done be a part of getting my, the, the home I was based in at the time through a CQC inspection. So the model that we follow in the course is uh, what's called the William Demings Plan, Do, Check, Act model. So essentially, the planning is you've got your policies, procedures and processes in place, so you've done your planning. So it's just making sure that you've got those and that you review those regularly and that people can see that you do that. The do element is do what you say and you say you're doing in your policies and procedures and your processes. Your checking is your audits, your internal, your external and your um, clinical audits. And then your acting is acting on any findings that you get from your audits to, to make sure you, you're continuing a process of improvement. So that's what I'm going to move on to next. So the biggest element of Deming's cycle is the um, element of continuous improvement. Um, what this does is it basically, the plan, do, check, act cycle kind of works like a wheel. So you, you get onto a cycle and you just keep going and you keep following it and it just becomes like everyday practice, which is, it, it's really, it actually, when you see it in motion, and one thing I provide when we do the course is I provide one-to-one -one clinical time. So for each delegate, they will get an hour's clinical time every month um, to discuss, because I like to make the course content relevant to your practice. It's not, I, I recognize I'm a nurse, I've been working uh, as a clinical manager in learning disabilities, I've worked um, as a mental health nurse, I've worked as a senior staff nurse in a brain injury and trauma unit. So I understand that varying environments and practices have got lots of different needs, which is why I provide the one-to-one -one, uh, service for every delegate that comes onto the course. Because I also recognize that the homework and the, um, the learning that we do needs to be molded around and needs to be meaningful for you. 
So you need to be able to engage and you need to know that when what you do, you know, at the end of the day, when you're doing a piece of homework, you want to know that that piece of homework is actually going to mean something. You don't want to do a piece of homework for the sake of doing a piece of homework. At the end of the day, we decide in your clinical sessions what homework you're going to do and how mean, what meaning it's going to have to your practice. And if it means that we, we do it over a couple of months and it's got that e extra added meaning and it provides your practice with that evidence, then you know, I, I think that's great in that respect. Um, so we also follow a very um, specific risk management module, um, sorry, not module, um, risk management strategy when we teach the course. Um, we follow a five-step um, clinical risk approach when we are delivering the course. We look at identifying hazards both to your service and to your patients. We look at, look at who's at highest risk of harm. We look at evaluating risk both clinically and uh, within the practices. And we also look at developing what's called a clinical risk register, which is basically a priority register for all the risks that are um, relevant to your practices, both to your patients and to your um, practice itself. We also do uh, provide a review and revise and risk monitoring service in terms of the module that we do. We would call that the failure mode effect analysis and what that does is that provides you with a calculation and of the level of risk that that, whether it's to the patient or to your practice, and then that, what that does is that then gives you the ability to be able to form your risk register and prioritise the risk within your practice. So, I spoke briefly about um, the uh, patient-centred practice module earlier. Um, we do very much focus on the voice of the patient within the course. Um, being a learning disability nurse, I have a very, very strong views on person-centred practice, which is why this is a very strong element of the course. So what we do as part of that specific module is we identify the patient risk. We look at how we collect voice of the patient data and make it meaningful. Not, make, no, no, not doing it for the sake of doing it, making sure it's going to be meaningful and that we can act on it once we've got it. Um, we analyse that data and then what we do is we then add any risk factors to your risk register that I spoke about in the previous slide. And then what we do, if there's any corrective action that we've found from that voice of patient data is that we will add that again to the risk register in that specific clinical area. So we have brought a practice case example from one of our delegates who's actually on the course at the moment in a GP practice in Sheffield. And I thought I would focus on diabetes as we've been talking about diabetes today. And what she did was, is she looked at the engagement of her patients with uh, diabetic foot checks. Um, and she found that at the, at, when she started, that she only had 88.39% of patients engaged. Um, so what she did was, um, as part of the metrics module, which is module two, she um, set herself a target of a three month KPI. Um, and she actually increased her um, engagement from 88 to 93.4 through running a patient engagement program, which was actually re a really nice piece of work to watch unfold. Um, and this is a testimony from her. Um, and she said that she finds our lectures very informative. Um, we do a lot of activities during the lectures, so they're not me sitting, reading and giving you death by PowerPoint. I'm literally engaging you and talking about what's going on in practice, bringing relevant legislation in. Um, but she really enjoys the one-to-one -one sessions that we have. They, she finds them very engaging. Um, and we use, also use that opportunity to discuss, like I said, how we mould those assignments around your practices and make them meaningful. Um, and she's already, she's on module three now, and she's already using the, the uh, elements of the course in practice and she, she's really, really enjoying it. So, to conclude, um, I can't really say anything that, that it's a great course. I've done it myself. I've been a nurse 26 years, and it, it's great for your practices. And when CQC come in, you've got a seamless, transparent evidence base to show that, you've, that you can, you're meeting patient uh, care needs. And the plan, to do, plan do check act cycles just, it, 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 it does what it says on the tin. I think that's why CQC liked it when they came into my place of work, is that it does what it says on the tin. 
So anyway, thank you very much for listening. Um, any questions? Thank you. I'll let you go home.